Christ is in our midst. Dear brothers and sisters, the last two Sundays we heard about the mercy of God. We heard about how He is compassionate and long-suffering and patient with us sinners. We heard about how He restores those who have fallen. We heard how He is always willing to renew, to refresh all those who run to Him in repentance, committing to change their life. He accepts all kinds of sinners who want to change and bring fruits of their repentance. And today, in commemorating or remembering, in remembering, not commemorating, remembering the dreadful judgment, the second coming of Christ, we hear that God is just and righteous. And his justice will be served. He gives us, brothers and sisters, freedom out of love. He gives us freedom to love him or to not love him. To follow his commandments or to ignore his teachings. That love is so comprehensive that he gives us full responsibility to determine the path of life that we should take. But he doesn't leave us blind, lost, without direction. Rather, he gives us everything that we need for salvation. He gives us the commandments. He gives us the commandments of love, to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And to love our neighbor as ourself. He says, if you want to be saved, if you want to follow me, Christ says, then deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. He says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be provided to you. He says, you were taught to hate your enemies, but I tell you to love your enemies, to pray for them. He gives us the Beatitudes to long and thirst after righteousness, to be pure in heart, to be meek and humble, to be merciful, to be long-suffering, to be poor in spirit. He gives us all of these things to show us how to use our freedom. And today, he gives us yet one of the most important responsibilities to love and serve those in need. He says that the end of time will come and the Son of Man will divide the sheep from the goats. Of course, this is symbolism, but sheep represent humility, obedience, and bringing fruits because they give milk, they give their fur for clothing and comfort of us. And he puts the sheep on the right because of their obedience and fruitfulness. But the goats, the goats, as we all know, are rambunctious, self-willed, 
and don't give fruits of their life. They are always contrary to those who try to direct them. And they are placed on the left for eternal damnation because of their disobedience. And he says to the sheep, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and I was thirsty, I was naked and I was imprisoned. I was a stranger and you ministered to me. And the righteous will say, Lord, when did we see all of this in you? He says, when you have done it to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. Enter into the blessedness of your Father. And to the unrighteous, he will say, you did not minister to me when I was in need, hungry and thirsty, naked and imprisoned, sick and a stranger. And the unrighteous will try to justify themselves and say, but we didn't see you in these conditions. But our Lord says to them, but you did see the least of my brethren in these conditions. And if you didn't do it to them, you didn't do it to me. Every year, brothers and sisters, we read this gospel on the day we remember the last judgment. When we have to give account of everything we've done. And what's even more dreadful, we have to give account for everything we didn't do. Saint Blessed Theophilax of Bulgaria says, in today's gospel, our Lord did not condemn the fornicators, did not condemn the robbers, extortionists, but rather he condemned those who did not do anything good. He condemned those for their inaction. That's what's dreadful about this. Because we always find excuse why we can't do more. We're too busy. We're distracted. We don't have the means. He or she doesn't deserve my help. He'll get help from someone else. The list of excuses is quite long. But nevertheless, we are called to help. We aren't called to gather all of our wealth like the man in the parable who gathered everything in his barns and his soul was demanded that night. Indeed, brothers and sisters, we will be judged for everything. Not only dreadful that we are judged for our inaction, but we're prepared to answer for our actions because they're obvious. We're prepared to even be judged for our th thoughts because if we have faith and belief, then those thoughts are vivid. But what's even more dreadful, we will be judged for our intentions our desires. Everything will be exposed. Everything will be exposed. We can't imagine standing here and offering a confession of the last month of our life to everyone. But in an instant, our entire life will be revealed before God. In an instant, it's hard enough 
to bear the guilt and the pain that we bear when we come to confession. We prepare to examine our conscience and that is so dreadful. We just want to get it over with. And that's just for a few weeks. When we come to the judgment, we will answer for our whole life in a second. Saint Theophan the Recluse says that in that instant, everything will be obvious. It will be written on our foreheads. There will be no deliberation. There will be no explanation. There will be no justification of us explaining why we did this or didn't do that. Because everything will be revealed so instantaneously that our entire presence will be colored by it. And we will obviously be either a sheep or a goat. And why is that? All of life is a communion. Everything. We commune with God. We commune with each other. But we also have freedom to commune with evil, selfishness, pride, anger, passions. And when we commune with these things, they distort the image of God. They make us dark. They distort how we think. And even they can distort our appearance, our physical appearance. That's why Saint Theophan the Recluse says, everything will be apparent. And on the contrary, if we commune with God, if we commune with good deeds, if we strive to work righteousness and live a humble, obedient, joyful life in our Lord, if we commune with the grace of God, then we will be transfigured and filled with light. And again, everything will be obvious where we stand. Just a few days ago, brothers and sisters, reading the daily scripture readings from the epistles of St. John the Evangelist, St. John says, if we have the goods of this world and we shut out our heart from those in need, then we do not have the love of God in us. He says, let us love God, not in word or thought, but in action. We have to act and live and express our faith. And that's not just limited to helping those in need. We have to act and live and express all the virtues that God requires from us. Love, peace, mercy, compassion, patience, long-suffering, self-denial. And when we do this, brothers and sisters, when we express our faith in such a way, then helping those in need will come natural. We won't think about it. It just will flow out from us. We won't have to think, should I or shouldn't I? Is he worthy or not worthy? It just flows out. And so, brothers and sisters, today, 
we remember the last judgment to wake us up. And so that we don't get comfortable thinking, God will forgive me. It's okay. Look at the publican and the Pharisee. Look at the prodigal son. Look at the thief on the cross. God will forgive me. The church puts the remembrance of the judgment today to remind us that yes, God is merciful, but he is also just. And we have responsibilities. So, Great Lent is nine days away. Let us think about what changes we need to make. Or, at minimum, let's decide firmly that we will follow the great fast and not just the diet. Everything about the great fast. Extra prayer, more attendance of church services, cutting off all kinds of entertainment, all kinds. No vacations, no trips. Fully enter into this great Lent so that we can strip away all the things that blind us from seeing what truly lies in our hearts. That's the purpose of Lent. And when we peel this away and we see what's behind the curtain, then we know what to change. Because God gives us time to change. He has blessed each and every one of us to see another great Lent. That is a huge blessing because we have time, more time, to repent, to change our life, so that when we do stand at the judgment seat, we won't hear him say, depart from me, you unrighteous, into the outer darkness, prepared for the devil. But rather, if we change our life, we can hear him say, Come, you blessed of my Father, enter into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world.